Are you having problems with your print quality and overall performance of your 3D printer? You might need to adjust your PID settings. How will you know? Well, if your temperature is fluctuating, you'll see that you've set the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius. It fluctuates up to 205 and then down to 195. And it does this fluctuation all sort of like sine wave thing. Then you know that you could be having problems with your PID settings. If you're having thermal runaway warnings, poor print quality, poor lay adhesion, extruded jams and clogs, all of these are uh, possible pointers to your PID settings. Also, if you've recently changed the thermistor on your, on your hot end, you will need to do your PID settings. These are all set in the factory and could stray off and become slightly unstable over time as you use your printer more and more. So if you see these problems, have a look at your PID settings. Now, what are PID settings? Your PID settings, so the PID stands for the proportional, integral, integral and derivative parts of their PID. The proportional part of the PID controller helps to keep the actual temperature as close to the desired temperature that you set. The integral term helps to account for accumulated errors and can prevent temperature fluctuations. The derivative part helps to predict the rate of temperature change and can help reduce overshoot and oscillations in your temperatures. So with this whole PID process, it runs on a mathematical process on your motherboard of your 3D printer and helps to prevent these oscillations on your temperature and the three parts are built together. In the past on much older machines you had to set these PID settings manually on the motherboard using voltmeters it was very complicated and that has been fixed now with using the motherboard of the machine. All the complex mathematical calculations are done on the motherboard and there's very little for you to do once the settings are done. Now on certain machines, you'll see here that in front of me, I've got an artillery machine and over here I've got the Prusa. My Prusa, this is a secondhand Prusa that I bought, extremely chuffed with this machine. Great machine, really works really, really well. I'd like to do a review and a little bit of a, a, a chat about this printer on another episode. But on this case, I'm going to do the PID settings on both these machines and I'll show you how different they are. The artillery is a little bit more complicated. You have to dive into software. Uh, the Prusa is really easy. I will show you that uh, each on their own separate demonstration. And I'm going to push these into two shorts that you can go and see a quick reference guide on how to do the artillery and how to do the Prusa PID settings if you ever get stuck after changing a thermistor or something like that. But PID settings are a crucial part of 3D printing and maintain that temp temperature on the hot end so that your plastic melts and it melts uh, evenly and, and predictably into your print so that when you do your print, you get your best quality out of it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I've noticed that about 90%, over 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button. Help me build this channel and it helps to get more focus to this channel so I can continue to build this channel and bring you this great content. Hopefully you like the content. Hit the like, hit the like button if you do. Right, first and foremost, we're going to do the artillery machine. That is the more complicated machine and takes a little bit more effort. The Prusa, as I will show you in a few minutes, is really simple. And there's some great work done by the guy, the Prusa team that have put this together. So on the, on the artillery, we need to install a piece of software called Prontoface. Prontoface helps us to connect to the motherboard and fire off commands to the motherboard and get those to work. So we're going to do that first. I'm going to post all the links below uh, for Prontoface. Now I am going to put timestamps in the uh, in the timeline below so that you can skip to the artillery one or skip to the Prusa one as you need it. The artillery one is very similar to my Ender 3 at the back there and most of the other machines that are running Marlin. So I'm going to demonstrate this but in the timeline you can skip ahead if you want to and just skip part the section that you don't want to watch. So the first thing I'm going to do is install Prontoface. Now Prontoface is our main interface that we are going to be using to interface with the machine. Prontoface is also known as Print Run. I am on the website. I'll post the link down below and you can download, a, download the latest version of it. So we've come to the Prontoface.com website and we are going to now download our software. So we click on the Git repository down in the download section. We go down and you'll see that a pre-compiled version is available. We can click here. I will post this link directly in the description below. And then 
we click on to the print run version 2 windows x64 version so we'll open that up and we'll download that right now and we will open the folder extract so you have to open the folder you have to extract it with your your windows extractor your zip extractor and we'll open our Prontoface. If this comes up, just go to more info and say run anyway. Once Prontoface is downloaded and we've got it extracted from the zip file, we can turn our printer on and plug in the USB type B cable into here. And that will connect up. We can now run Prontoface and that should connect us up. You'll see that it's selected COM3 at the top here and we are ready to go. So I'm just going to resize this a little bit here so we can see what we are doing. And the top right here, I'm gonna click on connect. This will connect to the printer and our printer is now ready to accept commands from us. So we are going to go M503. This will show, so M503 will show us our current settings. And if you look right here, You'll see that M301 has got its PID, those are your current PID settings. Now we are going to run the calibration. Mine probably won't change by much because I haven't done much to it, but those are my current settings and we are going to run that now. So in order to run the, uh, the, the settings, we're going to go M303 space E0 for extruder 0. We're going to set our desired temperature. I'm going to go for 220 degrees because that's about what I print at usually. And we're going to go C3, meaning cycle through this for three times. We'll press enter and the PID will start. Now what will happen is the hot end will heat up all the way to our desired temperature of 200 degrees, 220 degrees Celsius and it will kick off the PID uh, auto-tune. You want to see a detailed view of where we are at i can click on over here and this will show us as our temperature is rising on our extruder we are nearly there that's one thing with the artillery it heats up really quickly right we're at 200 degrees we are nearly there we are sort of stabilizing onto our 220 degrees we're getting there and it will set the temperature to 220 degrees it'll try to stabilize it at 220 and then it's going to turn the hot end off and you'll see that the temperature will dip and then it will do this three times Now that we have completed that process, it has completed the auto-tune and it will give the available figures. You'll see that the P, I and D parts have been set and mine were quite far off actually because if you look here, the P is at 13.71 and mine was sitting at 22.14. So it has adjusted this quite a bit. So we are now going to have to set that. That's unfortunately after you've done this process, it hasn't set your PID yet. It's just shown you what the values are. And now you need to go and set that. So as I said, the, the Marlin side of things are a little bit more difficult. Now we're going to go M301. This is to program the actual values in. And we are going to start with our P. So we put a capital letter P and we copy the amount in there, 13.71. You could also just copy that out of that point. The I is 1.13, so we're gonna now do a space, I 1.13, and then the D is 49.69. So we're gonna go D 49.69, 41.69, sorry. Those will set those values, we hit enter, and it will push that through. Now it has pushed those PID settings through, uh, they then need to save these settings. So we're going to go M500 and that will save the settings. Now the settings are stored on the machine. And if we go M503, you'll see that the updated values that we have just put in there are now in there. So that is it for setting the PID on your 
uh, Octillion machine and it now should run a lot more stable. This is actually going to help my machine. I didn't realize how far out it was. So this should stabilize things and get things going. Right, now that we've done that, we are going to switch over to the Prusa. The Prusa is a lot more simple than the artillery and all other modern machines. So we're just going to get rid of our laptop. We no longer need that, which is ultra cool. Now we're going to switch over to the Prusa. The Prusa is a lot more simple. A lot of thought has gone into the software by Joseph Prusa and his team. And it really is an impressive machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the menu. We are going to go down to calibration. Hit the calibration. We are going to go down to PID calibration. Hit that. And we're going to set our desired temperature. Just like we did on the on the time before with the, with the artillery. We're going to set it to 220 degrees. You can set it to whatever you want to set it to and we're going to hit OK and you'll see that PID calibration is starting. It'll cycle 0 to 5 so the Prusa does 5 cycles of this and it will cycle through and then once it is complete it will let us know it will set all the settings you don't have to go and set the settings and it's done. It is that simple. So let's watch this for a, for a minute or two. I'll speed up the footage and we can go and have a look at how this goes through and calibrates the um, hot end. You'll see over here that the temperature is rising nice and rapidly, well, relatively quickly up into the 220 degrees section. You'll see that it overran by quite a long way, so obviously PID calibration is needed and that this will fix that problem. And there you go. Now the PID calibration is done and the Prusa is ready and ready to go. So a lot less painful of the Prusa. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like and subscribe. Please, we really are wanting to build this, this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I will be releasing two shorts of this process just to make it simple as a quick reference if you need to reference back to how to do it quick and, and simply. Thank you for watching. God bless. Stay well, stay safe, and see you soon. Cheers. Bye.